Hello, and welcome to my left ear. I just started a video and it got totally interrupted with one of those emergency messages. So I'm starting over. Uh, Mercury is retrograde, so it's to be expected. It's been this way all week long. Uh, anyway, anyway, welcome to my left ear. I am Carrie Freeman. It is Friday, May 20th. Uh, I do psychic commentary and uh, left-leaning politics and a little spirituality on this channel. I try to keep it <clears throat> uplifting as much as possible. And uh, this is not for MAGA people. You really should move on. You'll really won't like this channel. So there we have it. And what I do privately is in my private life, I am a change agent and I do hypnotherapy, therapeutic hypnosis and coaching, intuitive psychic coaching to help people with a direction. Information about those is below. I made videos about my psychic coaching and my hypnotherapy. So there you go. Um, everybody asks you this, but it really does matter. Subscribe, like, and tell your friends. Would really like that. And the last thing is on Sunday, there will be some videos that are going up about my new Patreon that you can join, and that'll be Sunday afternoon, so keep an eye out. Uh, depending on your time frame, it might be Monday morning. And this is for entertainment purposes only, as you know. All right, here we go, and I hope I don't get caught off, cut off again. Uh, this is my left ear. This is not the runes right now. What I said a few minutes ago is that, as you probably know, the DOJ has an active grand jury set up right now to look into these confidential uh high classified boxes that trump moved from white house to mara fargo which is what i call it mara fargo because it's he's a joke and it's a joke uh so now this past week the doj which this is a good sign asked the january 6th committee uh for like a thousand texts, emails, voicemails, I'm not sure about voicemails, uh, for their investigation. And Benny Thompson, who's head of this committee, uh, said no. Um, the files, because they work so hard to accumulate them, are our product and we're not finished yet. But he did say publicly that anybody from the DOJ uh, you know, with the right, what clearance, whatever that would be, can come over and pour through what they have. So he's not denying information. He's just not sending everything over to them at this point. Uh, so that's a little bit of a crinkle, but nobody's that worried about it. Um, now, the interesting thing is, um, in the beginning, I when the when the January 6th committee convened, I predicted that they would be this tremendous boon to the DOJ because they will have done so much homework uh, that just inadvertently the DOJ is going to benefit. But it's not going to happen before the committee feels they've. Um, you know, they've had their televised event, blah, blah, blah. So we got to watch this, but I did do some runes, okay? And what I <clears throat> what I asked the runes is, will the DOJ and the January 6th committee in Congress end up working together, okay? And, uh, and by the way, Glenn Kirshner is into this, of course, and he said that it's very excellent that the committee went first, that the committee did this investigation before the DOJ. <clears throat> I'm not an attorney and I didn't completely understand the complexity, but I know that I trust anything that Glenn Kirshner says. So this is happening in the right way. First rune I got, the rune of fertility, which is very good. Uh, that automatically told me yes, yes. Uh, and I really didn't pick any other runes because I just know sometimes, okay, that's the answer. I don't need to beat this pillow because the fertility rune is an urge towards harmonizing in personal relationships. 
and it's described as a joyous time of deliverance and there is strength to achieve completion it is also emergence from a closed chrysalis state and that closed chrysalis state would be secrets and information that have not come to the full yet that's what that is about so i just knew my left ear knew that okay i don't need to pull all three runes they will come together they're going to benefit each other and they're going to work together this is just a little crinkle and remember it's happening in the middle of mercury retrograde and i doubt that anybody in dc thinks about mercury retrograde i, I would be very surprised um now we're back to my left ear bad news this week that's not being talked about that much but the russians i'm gonna take some water because i'm gonna cough the russians took the city of maripol and uh they marched a lot of ukraine military out of the steel plant <clears throat> we don't know where they are they're alive and my left ear my left ear immediately it came so fast that Zelensky, is it Zelensky? All of a sudden I'm like, uh-oh, Zelensky, Zelensky. I wrote a V in here and I went, what did I do? Zelensky, um, he's got something in his back pocket. He's got something prepared. It's kind of like, oh, no, 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 no. You're not taking Maripol. We're gonna come back and just grab it from you because we have all the artillery and all the uh, personnel to do this. So this is what I think is gonna happen. I, I just think Zelensky has a plan. We know he's very smart, very clever. And I just said, it's like, no, no, you're not gonna end up with Maripol. Uh, the other thing my left ear feels is that there's preparations for Putin to be replaced. There are preparations. There are things going on. So we're on high alert. And that would go along with these eclipses that are happening, which brings, you know, gigantic changes. And this would go along with eclipse season. Um, I have, <clears throat> I don't have a lot to say about the Buffalo shooting other than is completely enraging. And, on, and heartbreaking. But I had an ongoing thought, like when this kind of thing happens, I saw a picture of the guy and his family, the shooter and his family, and they had his name, his face uh, fuzzied out, but we, we see his face on the news. <clears throat> it looked really normal, really normal, and both parents were our engineers. But do the parents not notice anything? I mean, what happens? that they don't notice, that they don't inquire, they don't say, can I have your password? Because he had made threats and he had been uh, briefly, I think, hospitalized or institutionalized. And there you have it. You know, there were the warnings again. And I do not blame parents, uh, unless they just buy an AK-15 for their kid. But I do wonder do you get an inkling if you pay attention? That's all. Uh, it's pretty horrible. Do I think, do, do, does my left ear think that this is going to change gun laws? Not yet. Not until we get uh, really good majorities of the Democrats in the Senate and the House. Then we could start putting um, regulations. It won't be dramatic, but it'll be regulations. I don't know what they are, but I imagine they'll be like, Big restrictions on AR-15. Everybody has to register. Nobody under 21 can buy firearms. I mean, just things that start this ball rolling. But sure, a lot of pain and agony in Buffalo. Just going to the grocery store. I mean, wow, you know? I hope we don't get desensitized to this kind of thing. Back to my left ear. Uh, my latest thoughts on Roe v. Wade. I don't feel good, okay? I don't feel good about the decision in June. One thing that we're feeling is that all the protests 
really angered SCOTUS members. There is all over Twitter today that Chief Justice Roberts and Clarence Thomas are arguing. And of course, we know that Chief Justice, uh, not Thomas, Roberts, is really want to find this leaker, leaker, leaker. And I don't know who the leaker is, but I believe Jenny Thomas is capable of this, thinking she would do it thinking it would strengthen the Supreme Court and get it done. But my first thoughts originally were, this is from the liberal side and is probably a clerk because it, it, it did something good in that it gave the Democrats a heads up. It gave the pro-choice people a heads up. You gotta get out there now. This is happening, they're gonna, they're gonna ambush you. So whether someone on the right did it, I believe, we believe it benefited the left. Um, it gave the libs a heads up. So I did do runes, even though I'm sharing these thoughts with you. And it was very interesting and a little confusing. Uh, tell me about Roe v. Wade in June, because that's when they're supposed to give their deliberation or their... Um, I got the rune of fertility, which is so good. And it's an urge towards harmonizing in personal relationships. But if I'm, if I'm to interpret the whole reading, which I'll get to two in a minute, I believe this fertility is about the movement for choice more than it is the answer to my question. <clears throat> because the protesters now are truly united and the feeling around is hell no. I don't care what you guys do, hell no. So it is a joyous time and there is strength in achieving completion and once again, it's emergence from a closed state. So people that took Roe v. Wade for granted are not taking it for granted. It's out there now, the fight is on. All right, now we get to what I think is the outcome truth, which is the, the rune of movement, which is just a big X. And normally it's very positive, but it's in reverse, okay? And it talks about movement that appears to be blocked. And it says, you're not gonna like this. Not all possibilities are open to us. It says, consider what is timely in your process. And that's a tough one to swallow. But here's the thing. The end of this message in the runes book says exactly this. And this is my feeling too. What is yours will come to you. This could be through, it'll get codified eventually. And of course, that needs the majority of Dems and um, in Congress and Senate, get out and vote, get everybody you know, that will vote Dem, give them a ride. This is what we need. But I'm not through. Then I got protection. And in the protection, it talks about new opportunities and challenges. They're very typical of this room. And it talks about timely action is key. Um, it does say don't don't deny what is happening, this, this reality that's happening, which is so shocking. But here it is, there's another positive message at the end. And it says, you will progress, knowing that is your protection. So let me sum this up, because I think this is a little confusing. Uh, this this uh, Roe v. Wade very well may be overturned. Okay, I think that's how it's looking. Um, there's a lot of fights going on behind the scenes. They, I think the SCOTUS, uh, they're actually afraid. And I think they have reason to be afraid. Um, their lives are not gonna be the same after this. They really aren't. I don't think they've given this some thought. People are not. After 50 years, they are not. And Gen X, they're not going to put up with this. Like, I lived with pre-Roe v. Wade. I know what those back alley abortions, I helped friends get them. But this Gen X were like, oh no, no. And there's a lot of them. So I think we're going to be looking at 
codify, and just keep putting that codification. And uh, it could be a little while before we get the rights back. I'm acting very calm privately. I feel homicidal, but that's really not my job uh, when I do my show, is to you know try to be somewhat balanced. Uh, I was gonna do runes on Pennsylvania, which is huge in the news right now, about the governor's race, which would be Fetterman, who's just recovering from a stroke, and Oz or McCormick, and there's not gonna be a Kathy Barnett because she's way down, thank God, because she's really, really radical. Um, it's bad enough with Oz and McCormick, but Oz and McCormick are so close right now and probably you've heard that uh, Trump has gotten very loud and is saying, Oz just needs to claim it. He won, don't wait for the rest of the votes. And then the Republicans in Pennsylvania are furious because Trump is like denying Republican votes to be counted. So it's a mess. Uh, and I thought, you know what? Let's just see who Fetterman is actually going to run against. I think there's a good chance it'll be Mehmet Oz. We'll see. Uh, but Pennsylvania is kind of a mess right now. All right. Now, another thing with Pennsylvania, but this is my left ear. Uh, Josh Shapiro, who is currently the attorney general in Pennsylvania, is running for governor. And he's good. And he's going up against this Mastriani, who's this radical right wing guy who gets up and says, I'm putting that secretary of state in place when I'm governor and that person's going to count the votes and throw out the votes. So he's planning on cheating. He's basically telling us that. And he's very scary, to be honest with you. But there's good reason to believe that Shapiro can take this. So I, we believe Shapiro, Democrat, the AG, will become the governor and he's going to protect all these um, female rights and Josh Shapiro is good, if you know anybody in Pennsylvania. And then this is the last rune that I threw. It's about Raphael Warnock, who's a senator in Georgia, who I just think is gold. I just think he's the best. Um, and he's up against Herschel Walker, ex-football player, who I think has um, some damage from concussions. He comes off as very dim, not very uh, intelligent, and he avoids, he avoids debate. Are you kidding me? And there isn't anything the Raphael Warnock cannot debate about. He is brilliant. He is a man of spirit. He's good. He's kind. He's classy. He's everything. I can't imagine Georgia losing Raphael Warnock or voting for... But uh, here it is. It's really close. The first rune I got was partnership. It's a gift of freedom. And the funny thing, when I read through the partnership, because I'm starting to memorize the whole book now, there were so many spiritual messages. And I went, they're talking about Raphael Warnock because he's a man of spirit. He's a man of God. He's also a pastor. Um, and so I went, oh, this partnership, like I feel like they're talking about his partnership with the divine. Honestly, that's... Then I got breakthrough, which is transformation. A major period of achievement and prosperity is introduced. It sounds like nothing but good news for Raphael. Darkness is behind you. And then the last rune with Raphael Wernick and the really loser uh, Herschel Walker is the rune of protection in the reverse position. But this was more of a personal message for Raphael that he needs to pay attention to his health, makes total sense. He needs to maybe even work a little harder now, uh, but he must be careful about people using him or deceiving him. So that's just a little private caution. Now, they are very close in the race, but there's a lot of energy behind Raphael because he's simply so much more superior. So, that's what I think is going to happen, but I, it's, I think it's going to be close. It's hard to believe, but I think it's going to be close. All right. Now I'm getting to the quotes. And um, this quote is from Franklin Delano Roosevelt, 32nd president of the United States. And he said, no man can tame a tiger into a kitten 
by stroking it. So that, that talks about how we deal with tyrants and how we let them terrorize us and we act from fear and like, it's okay, we'll do this. And Roosevelt said, no, no, that's not how you do it. And I liked it, so I'm sharing it with you. Um, and then the next quote is from Austrian poet, philosopher, and novelist, uh, Rainer Maria Rilke, which is, I'm not always good pronouncing his name. Maria Rainer Maria Rilke, gentlemen. And he wrote, believe in love that is being stored up for you like an inheritance and have faith that in this love, there is a strength and a blessing so large that you can travel as far as you wish without having to step outside of it. He wrote some beautiful things, Rilke. Wow, wow, wow. I'm gonna share a teeny little bit of good evidence. <clears throat> I have some big stuff, but I'm just not ready to share it. No, I, we're not making the movie yet, but it's just really, really personal, so I'm just kind of keeping that close to the vest. But I did something in the uh, Starbucks the other day. I go into this particular Starbucks because I like to write there. I write better when I have people walking around in ambient sound. I concentrate better. Uh, and I often uh, get their hot chocolate. I really love the hot chocolate at Starbucks, but I, I have an adjustment with it. <clears throat> I get an extra pump of chocolate and an extra pump of vanilla because they used to make it with vanilla and then they stopped and I couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. And then a manager said, oh, we're not putting vanilla. I went, he said, but you can ask for it. So now this Starbucks, like they know me. Oh yeah, we know how you like your hot chocolate. I'm sorry, I'm famous there. So very friendly made, you know, and I go and I get it and I sit down. It was like so good because when they make it good, it is so good. So I got up from my seat and I went over to, and I said to the two girls that were baristas, I said, by the way, this is so good today. This is so good. And I thanked them. And honestly, my friends, they lit up. I don't know that people do that. I don't know that people go, this is the best vente. So you could just do that because it's just a moment. And honestly, they lit up. And when I wrapped up my stuff to leave, they were waving goodbye. Hey, bye, have a good day. They were, they were waving to me and they were saying goodbye. So I knew it had an impact. It's so simple, just give a compliment. Honestly, I don't think people, they get complaints, but I don't think they get compliments. It's free giving it a compliment. Okay, so that's my teeny, teeny little story. Um, that's it. I came in a little bit under today. Usually, I've been going like a little bit over, but I'm 23 today. And I wish you well. There's gonna be another uh, announcement on Sunday afternoon. Like I said, it may not be till late because Patrick is coming over uh, to work with me and uh, there'll be the announcement and then there'll be uh, a couple of goodies on one of the Patreon channels, if you choose, if you choose to join it. Uh, so, with a lot of affection, and be safe out there, and peace and blessings. Have a good day. Be somebody's good evidence. Okay. Bye bye.